Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today we are going to continue our discussion on How Psychologists Study Part 3. As we all know, in the previous videos, we have already discussed about the goals of psychological research, different kinds of researches and different methods that are used by psychologists while taking up experimental observation researches. Now, the objectives of today's program are to make you aware about certain ethical considerations in psychological studies and to make you understand the uses of statistical analysis in psychological studies. Let's begin our discussion with the ethical considerations in the psychological studies. Before I begin my discussion, I want to explain to you that whenever we talk about psychological studies, we refer to subjects. So who are those subjects? As we all know that psychological studies are conducted on human beings as well as animals. That is, the living beings are considered while taking up the researches. So, these animals or human beings that are under study are known as subjects. Ethical considerations in psychological studies. As I've already discussed, the subjects under studies are living subjects. So, there are certain ethical considerations that needs to be taken care of while conducting the researches. The first one is informed consent, which means that before doing any kind of research, the subject should know that he is being tested. The investigator can conduct a study on other persons only after obtaining their prior permission to do so. The next consideration is known as confidentiality, which means that whatever results we come up with, these results are to be kept confidential. The findings of research remain confidential and are not disclosed with anybody. Debriefing. If some kind of manipulation or deception has been done in the study, the researcher has the duty to clarify that to the participant after completing the study. Right to withdraw is one of the major consideration, which means that any time if the subject during this research feels to withdraw from the research, he or she can withdraw. That is, the participants have a right to withdraw from the study if they desire to do so and we cannot stop them. Next is responsibility. The researcher has to bear the responsibility of any harm done to the participant during the course of the study. These were certain ethical considerations that are need to be taken care of while conducting psychological research. Let's come up to the next objective of today's discussion which is need of statistics in psychology. Why do we need statistics while conducting researches? Need of statistics in psychology. As we all know, statistics is a branch of mathematics. It deals with collection, classification, description and interpretation of quantitative data. When I say quantitative data, that means it deals with the numbers. In psychology, statistics is used for number one, describing the behavior and number two, predicting the behavior. When the statistics is used for describing the behavior, it is known as descriptive statistics. And when it is used for explaining the behavior, inferential statistics is used. We will understand how. Now, descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics are the numbers which are often used to describe a variable. The major descriptive statistics are the measures of central tendency, which is mean, median and mode measures of variation and correlation. We are going to discuss about all these aspects now. This is one example that when we are conducting a psychological research and when we use statistics, this is how do we try to plot the graph. This is known as normal probability curve. This is one example. This is just an image to show you how the numbers are plotted on a graph. 
Inferential statistics are used in the experiments or investigations which are designed to make generalization about the population on the basis of a sample. There are many inferential statistics. T-test is one of those many inferential statistics. Let us discuss now the functions of statistics. The first is data and information which is collected can be presented briefly and precisely because we are dealing with numbers. So it becomes easy for us to present the data precisely. The results which we obtain are more accurate and objective because we use the scientific method of obtaining the results. The analysis of data is made more scientific because we use certain kinds of formulas. General conclusions can be arrived at and the comparative studies are made possible when we are using statistics. So this is one graph that shows that how the numbers are put in the graph, how the results are obtained and how it is presented. Relationship between two or more variables can also be investigated when we are doing researches and when we are using statistics. The most important thing is prediction about behavior can be made with the use of statistics that if the results are today like this then what are going to be the results after six months for any behavior which is under study. Let's talk about some of the basic statistical concepts that we use in psychological researches. The first is known as frequency distribution. Now let us understand what is frequency distribution. First of all as the name suggests frequency which is the number of times something is existing. Suppose you have given a test to the class of 25 students and you obtain the following scores. The scores are 10, 7, 6, 5, 5, 6, 8, 9, 3, 6, 8, 7, 4, 8, 9, 5, 7, 4, 9, 6, 6, 11, 10, 8, 9, 8, 3. Now, in the above distribution of scores, the highest score as we all can see is 11 and the lowest score is 3. Thus, the entire group has scored in between these two limits which is 11 and 3. Now, the above data can be presented in the form of table where the scores and frequency of their occurrences are shown. The table shows that maximum numbers of students are in the score range of 6 and 8. See, I have put this picture here so that you can understand that what is frequency in the first uh, ball here. All the colored balls are existing in the same quantity, which is 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%. The blue ball is existing 2% of the time. The yellow ball is existing 2% of the time, as well as the green, pink and red ball. In the second distribution, we can say that the blue ball is existing maximum number of times. And in the last, we can see that the red ball is existing maximum number of times. This is the frequency of something to be existing at a particular situation. Now, as we were talking about uh, the uh, last example where I uh, talked about certain numbers. Now, how do we put those numbers in graphs? In order to put those numbers in graphs, we use a tally mark. A tally mark is same as the Roman 1. It is used for 1 score and tallies are done in a duster of 5 scores. I will show you in the next table. When I say that tallies are done in a duster of 5 scores, the 5th tally mark cuts the first 4 tallies with a slotting line. These clusters helps us in counting large numbers. In this slide, you can see that how the distribution is put in the form of table. I have put the numbers again here so that you can understand that how do we use graphs to represent the numbers. If we have a look at number 3, we see that there are two tellies in front of number 3. That means on looking above, we can see that number 3 is existing two times. That means two tellies are there to represent number 3. 
same is for number 4. Number 5 is existing 3 times. So, we are putting 3 tellies. Now, let us talk about number 6. When we count on the distribution of scores, we find that number 6 is existing 5 times. That means 6 here, 6 to second time, 3rd, 4th and 5th. When I was explaining you that how tellies are put, I said that tellies are put in the form of 5 tellies. The 4 tellies are in the form of vertical lines and the 5th telly crosses the 4 lines. So, in order to represent the frequency of number 6, we are putting 4 vertical bars and the 5th bar in the form of slanting line. That means number 6 is existing 5 times in this frequency distribution. You can check for others scores as well. So, this is how in order to make a frequency distribution table, we are taking the help of tellies. Methods which are used to summarize the characteristics of data are called the measures of central tendency. We are going to discuss all these measures in the next slides. These are the measures that depict the tendency of the distribution of scores that how the scores are distribution in a particular phenomena. The first is known as mean. Now, first we should know what do we mean by mean. Mean is the most popular and important measures of central tendency. It is also known as the arithmetic mean. It provides the basis for calculating other statistics like standard deviation and correlation and also describes the summary characteristics of the variables measured. Let us understand how. For instance, you must have noticed that whenever we are watching a cricket series and it is played, people stick to their TV sets. Why? Very often in the second part of the match, a caption occurs on the TV screen as run rate. We all know, we have seen matches and we all know that what is the screen that is being displayed and how do we come to know and how do we, that, that what is the present run rate which is going on, on and on the basis of the present run rate, we predict that what is going to be the run rate in the next overs. The present run rate and the expected run rate are displayed on the TV screens. The run rate is the average score per over. So, we can say that mean is the average of all the scores. There is particular formula to calculate the mean. The mean is weighted average of all the raw scores. It is computed by totaling all the raw scores and then dividing the numbers of scores together. As I have already discussed, in order to calculate the mean, we need to add up all the scores and divide those scores by the number of scores. Let us understand how do we calculate the mean. For example, we have 7 scores. All these 7 scores are 10, 20, 20, 40, 50, 10 and 10. Now, the mean can be computed with this method in the following manner. Capital N represents the number of scores. So, we can see that the total number of scores are 7. We need to add up all these scores and divide the scores by the number of scores. So, the scores are 10 plus 20 plus 20 plus 40 plus 50 plus 10 plus 10. Now, we need to divide these scores by the number of scores. So, the number of scores are 7. The result is 22.86. That means the mean is 22.86. The mean M is represented by capital X and it is pronounced as X bar. Individual score is denoted by small x. Total number is denoted by capital N. Now, in this example, if I have to tell you what is X bar and what is small x, let us discuss, for example, the scores which are there. That is 10, 20, 20, 40 and so on. In order to represent these scores, these scores are represented in the form of small x. And capital X represents the total mean, which is the number 22.86. 
capital N is the number of scores that is 7. Let us talk about the next measure of central tendency which is known as median. What is median? The median is the value that divides a group of scores into two equal parts. One part comprising of all the values greater and the other part comprising of all values less than the median. Median is positional average and is not affected by magnitude of the scores that is how much the scores weigh that doesn't affect the median. Median is that where the score is existing. It is easy to understand and calculate as well. For example, the median for the following scores is 25. How? The numbers are 12, 20, 23, 23, 25, 26, 28, 35 and 40. There are 4 scores below 25 and 4 scores above 25. That means median is 25. What is the position of the median? It is at the fifth number. So, 4 points above the median and 4 points below the median. The next measure of central tendency is known as mode. The mode is that score which occurs maximum numbers of time in a given series of scores. The word mode has been taken from French language which means that fashion. Hence, mode is the most frequent or popular number that is existing more number of time in any frequency distribution. The mode in the following score is 20. Why? 10, 15, 20, 20, 20, 35, 35. So that means what number is the one which is existing more number of times? That is 20. So mode becomes 20. It is easiest to calculate. Mode is frequently used in business in weather prediction and in fashion etc. Because we just want to know that what is the trend of something that is going on today or in a present situation. Correlation. Correlation is a method of numerically showing how closely related are any two sets of variables. Two variables always tend to fluctuate in the same or in the opposite direction. When it is found that a relationship exists, it is called a correlation. For example, I have already discussed that there is a relationship between your scholastic achievement and your performance. That if you perform well, then your scholastic achievement goes up. If you do not perform well, your scholastic achievement goes down. That means a relationship is existing between two variables and this relationship is known as correlation. We can have so many examples like scholastic achievement and performance. We can have stress and your job satisfaction, your test anxiety and your performance on the test. So there is correlation between all the variables which I am talking about. That means a relationship exists between two variables. One is affecting the other. One can affect the other in a positive manner or in a negative manner. Let us understand how. When scores in the one variable change in the same direction as those in the other or in the inverse direction, correlation or relationship is there to exist. When I am saying that it is existing in the same manner or inverse direction, what does it mean? Let us understand what is it. The score through which the psychologist express the relationship between two variables is called the coefficient of correlation. It is an index which indicates the quality as well as the quantity of relationship. When I say quality, that is if it is positively correlated or negatively correlated. And when I say quantity, then what is the quantity of relationship between two variables? Quantity we are going to discuss in the upcoming slides. With the variables, three possible relationships are there. Either there exists a positive correlation or a negative correlation or no relationship at all. Let us understand what is a positive correlation with the help of one example. Your scholastic achievement and your performance. If you perform well, 
then your scholastic achievement is higher. One goes up, the other also goes up. Now let us understand what is a negative correlation. In order to understand a negative correlation, let's take up the example of test anxiety and the test scores. We all know a particular amount of stress is required in order to perform a particular task. But too much stress adversely affects the performance. Now in order to understand the negative correlation with test anxiety and the scores, just imagine if you are too much anxious about taking up a test, what is the result that is going to have in your final scores? You all know that the score is going to go down with too much test anxiety. But if you have low level of test anxiety, then the score goes up. That means there is a negative correlation. They are existing in the inverse direction. Now, what is a zero correlation? In order to understand a zero correlation, any two variables that are not related at all. For example, your computer proficiency and the way you eat. There is no correlation between these two things. How do you eat doesn't affect how do you use the computers. So this is zero or no correlation at all. There are many examples in order to understand the positive, negative or zero correlation from our day to day life. Now, when we have already discussed about the quality and quantity of the correlation, let's know that how do we put that quality and quantity in this in a graph in the form of a table. For example, I have taken all these ranges in order to know that when there is a positive re relation, how do we present that positive relation. I have already discussed that the correlation coefficient that is obtained with the help of correlation method, the range exists between minus 1, 0 to plus 1. So, when we are talking about the uh, relationship between two variables, which is a positive re relationship, we can have different values. So those different values or those different ranges can be from 0.0 to 0 0.20. That means if I look up at the values, which is 0.0 to 0 0.20, that means although the two variables are positively related, but their relationship is negligible because the range of relationship is only 0 to 0.2. Likewise, we can have values for low, moderate as well as high correlation, very high correlation, perfect correlation as well as 0 or negligible correlation. These are some values for the positive correlation. So this was a range of positive correlation. In the similar manner, we can have the range for negative correlation, which means scores in one variable change with the other variable in the inverse direction. We have already taken up the examples for positive, which is the when the scores go in one direction and the negative correlation when the scores go up in the inverse direction. When inferential statistics is used, Whenever an experiment is specifically designed to measure the causal effects between two or more variables, that is, if this is happening, what is the reason behind the happening? That is the causal effect. Then inferential statistics is used. The main purpose of inferential statistics is to draw conclusions or results on the basis of treatment and interpretation of the data. There are many types of inferential statistics. The one example is t-test or f-test etc that are used for this purpose. And this is different than descriptive statistics as we have already discussed till the correlation. Now this is time to sum up that what we have learned in the present lesson which is how psychologists study in part 1, part 2 and part 3. We talked about the goals of psychological studies that is to describe, explain, predict and control the behavior under study. We also talked about the different kinds of researches which is basic research and applied research. That is basic research is dealing with developing theories whereas applied research deals with 
problem solving that is how to apply the knowledge in solving the problems we also talked about different methods first is experiment helps us to find the cause and effect relationship between two variables it is the observation under controlled conditions that is uh, most of the time it is conducted under the laboratory conditions an experiment has various parts it starts with a hypothesis which is the possible explanation for a particular question under study variables are measurable attributes of objects and people which the experimenter observes manipulates and controls there are various steps in the experimental method which have to be followed these are stating the problem forming of hypothesis sampling designing of the study material controls instructions results discussions and generalizations that is whenever we conduct a study this is the procedure that we follow we also talked about non experimental techniques that are used to obtain the description of behavior some of the techniques are observation survey case study introspection correlation etc the psychological tools include the questionnaire and interview psychometric test as well as the projective techniques statistics is used by the psychologist to judge the significance of research results it is of two types which is descriptive and inferential statistics and we all have already discussed that the descriptive statistics deal with summarizing the data and inferential statistics deal with drawing conclusions about population on the basis of sample statistical methods which are used to summarize the characteristics of data are called measures of central tendency and include mean median mode and correlation and are frequently used as descriptive statistics or are frequently known as descriptive statistics with this i end up for today's discussion thank you